If you've applied for a software engineering job recently, you may notice that it's a lot harder than it was a couple of years ago. That's because there are now a lot more engineers and a lot less jobs. In this video, I'm gonna go over exactly how and why that's happened and what it means for the future of software engineering. Hello, I'm Chris Pattle. I make videos on programming, entrepreneurship, and anything to do with engineering, really. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, please do consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss a future video. Right, now before I start, I just wanna give a little bit of a history lesson. So I started my career in 2010, which was around the same time that Apple launched the first iPad. And we call it the iPad. It was the year Instagram was founded, and we hadn't even heard of a VR headset yet. And although I didn't realize that at this point, this was actually the perfect time to be starting out in the software engineering industry because we just recovered from the 2008 financial crash and over the course of the next 10 years, tech stocks began to soar. And just generally speaking, it was a time when there were more jobs than there were qualified engineers who could fulfill those jobs. In fact, there weren't even enough unqualified engineers to fill those jobs. However, in 2022, as you know, COVID hit. This was a terrible time for a lot of people, but for engineers, it was actually the perfect outcome for a couple of reasons. First of all, a lot of companies realised that they needed to go digital and had to drastically change their business model overnight. So we need to change tactics. And in, in order for them to be able to do this, you need to hire tech workers. Secondly, working from home was now considered the new normal. To start, press any key. Where's the any key? Which for me personally was huge because in the past I'd always been quite limited by where I could work just based on my geographic location. So I live in the UK, but I don't live in a big city and I can't really get into London that easily. So yeah, this was quite a big limiting factor and actually placed quite a big cap on my, on my potential earnings, which I found out later. However, now I could apply to work for any company, no matter where they were in the world, as long as they were on board with fully remote working. And I kind of seized this opportunity really to get a job for a US company. If you, did, if you work in software engineering, you'll know that US companies do tend to pay like 1.5 to two times higher than, than UK salaries. So this was a perfect outcome for me, really. Get a job working for a company in the US, but still be based in my home country of the UK. So these two things combined meant that the demand for engineers just went through the roof, really. Name your price, Don. And the big tech companies like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google were really like aggressive in the hiring during the first few years of COVID, simply because they knew that having the best engineers on their team, you know, working for them was the biggest asset they could have. And I think this peaked in around 2021. This was the time when I was looking for a job and I was hearing back from almost every company that I applied for a role with. You know, I'm not the best engineer, I'm not the most talented, but I think I'm pretty decent. But I was getting first interviews at around for around three quarters of the jobs I applied for, which is kind of unheard of, really. It was just a fantastic time. However, fast forward to the present day and the world is a very different place. Interest rates are high, inflation is high, and those big companies I just talked about have since laid off a large chunk of their workforce simply because they overhired during the start of COVID. These charts are from layoffs.fyi and you can see that mid 2022 is when this started with January 2023 being the peak. In fact, just in one month, almost 90,000 workers were, were laid off and this only takes into account the ones that attract. A lot of medium and small size companies just simply won't feature on this chart. So that is now a large number of well-qualified, very smart engineers that are entering back into the job market. As I mentioned before on this channel, one way you can get started in the industry is to attend a coding bootcamp. Now these are intensive full-time courses. They normally last around 12 weeks and their aim is to give you all the knowledge and the skills that you need to get started and find your first junior role. Now this industry also saw a massive spike at the start of COVID. In fact, it went up by about 32% just in 2021. And you can kind of understand why that happened because during that time, a lot of us rethought our, our lives, you know, what we're doing in terms of work. And 
software engineering, it can be very lucrative, so it kind of enticed a lot of people in. And once again, this is now even more people who are looking for a job. So we've gathered that the total supply of engineers has increased, which would kind of be okay because there were a lot of jobs, but the total jobs has decreased. This has happened because obviously cost, cost of business right now is quite high. So a lot of companies are looking at their existing workforce and rather than hiring, they're thinking, how can we do more with the team we have? You know, how can we make them much more like efficient? And one of the ways you can do this is with AI tools, which as we know, over the last 12 months, kind of saw a massive rise in, in, in popularity. You know, I don't know if any of you have used GitHub Copilot, but GitHub claims that it can boost productivity by 55%, which haven't used it for the past month is definitely true. In fact, I would put it at higher than that. I'd say for me, it definitely makes me at least two times faster. It's it's like it actually just knows what you're thinking and it can auto-complete your code for you. It's quite scary. It's a, it's a mind-blowing tool. If you haven't tried it out, I would urge you to, to definitely do so. In fact, I'm, I might make a video in the future just, to, just about Copilot. So obviously up to this point, everything I've said is kind of just my opinion, my suspicions. But I really wanted to back this up with real data. So I wrote a script that queries the Hacker News API. For those that haven't heard of Hacker News, it's a it's, it's basically like, like Reddit for engineers. And at the start of every month, there's a thread that's posted called Who's Hiring, where companies can post roles that they're looking to fill. And at the same time, there's also a thread that's posted called Who Wants to be Hired, where engineers can you know, post their details, post their skill set, put their contact details. But bear in mind, you know, not all engineers will be posting to this because people might want to be a bit, bit more private. However, anyway, I, I grouped this data month by month. And as you can see by this chart, the, the blue line is the total number of job postings starting from 2014 it started it, it's been rising slowly and then it st it dipped down at the start of covid but quickly shot back up and it did peak around 2021 as i thought and it's been falling ever since then quite drastically actually the red line on this chart is the number of engineers who have stated they want to be hired this peaked at october 2023 and it's actually now overtaken the number of jobs. So fundamentally, this is proof that there are now more engineers than there are jobs. It's, uh, it's brutal out there. Obviously, this isn't a very scientific study. I, I should probably consider other job websites like Indeed. But I think it's a really good indication about what is happening currently in the job market. And I think this current climate is actually affecting junior engineers most because a lot of the kind of grunt work, a lot of the boring work that these engineers would be doing, you can now automate that with these AI tools that I've mentioned. I've got a twin brother who has recently been learning how to code and has been looking for his first job. And even though he has a good portfolio, I would say, he hasn't heard back from any of the jobs he's applied for, which is deeply worrying. You know, I'm worried for him, but I'm also worried for me because throughout my whole career, I've Never had to really worry about losing my job. I think that's almost been my superpower in a way. That I just, you know, did not have that fear because I knew that if I did lose my job or I, I got fired, you know, hopefully that wouldn't happen, but it could do. All I'd have to do would be to contact someone I've worked with in the past and within a couple of weeks, a month, I'd probably be able to get something else. But now I'm thinking, you know, how long is it going to take me? Is it going to take me a month, three months, six months? You know, how much runway do, do I need to have? And it's actually quite scary. It's also scary to think that ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot are getting quicker, faster than engineers can get better. I think it's only going to be a couple of years before they're better at their job than me. And I think what the future looks like for me and other engineers is actually spending a lot less time coding and more time just taking the output from AI tools and just um, just quality checking them and just looking over them, making sure everything works okay. We're basically becoming kind of QA testers. Anyway, that wraps up this video. If you're a software engineer or a tech worker and you've recently been through the hiring process, please let me know what it's been like in the comments section. I'd love to know. 
Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.